Gospel of November the 23rd, 2014, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a, sh as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you here or, or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you, did, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and did not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, we are celebrating the solemnity, this great feast of our Lord Christ, King of the universe. And we know, because the Lord himself says so, that he's coming back. He went away in this time of grace, after his accession to the, to the heavens, while he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But he will come back in a time. Of that we can be completely sure. And then will be judgment. There is no escaping that. Now many people could say that by praying, that by just uh, wearing a cross, that by... Um, reading the gospel, that by studying the Bible, that by even being there at the Mass, and even communion, receiving the Holy Communion, then that, that's enough. And they are so mistaken. Of the list of things that the Lord says, how He will judge, there is no praying, there is no going to Mass, there is no knowing the commandments, no, none at all. That is not the way that he will do. This is judgment. He will do, he will judge us based on the, our actions. Our actions. How easy it would be for us to say like the wicked, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or ill or in prison and did not minister to your needs. Because yes, we all would love to see the Christ in his white tunic with his bare and long hair and smiling, coming to you and asking you, oh, can you give me some, some food? I'm, I'm hungry. Can you spare a little bit of your water? I'm thirsty. And yes, we all say, oh Lord, you came down the cross, you're here with me, how blessed I am. Yes, of course. But the Lord is asking us to act on faith. And, th and thus he says, what you did not do with the least of these ones, you did not do for me. The righteous say and ask, when did we see you, Lord? For they did not see him either. But they saw their brothers. 
this other one, the felon, the killer, in prison, the stealer, the robber, there at prison, didn't see or didn't stop to consider whether or they were justly or unjustly there. But they saw the pain of the man or a woman that is sitting in jail, paying for his own wrongful deeds, and they visit him or her. They care for him. They help him learn the right way, the way of God. Or at least they share with them the hope. Even if they were in death row, they would, we would all be able to share hope in eternal life. But that takes courage, it takes compassion. They see and we can see our family, not to mention the people that are alone in hospitals and sanitaries. They're ill, perhaps your own parents or even your sons because you have been angry with them and you don't want to visit them would I ask you to go back and visit them not only because they are your family but because they are Christ in suffering Christ himself so that you might tend them and by doing that gain heaven for tending the Lord how many homeless people do we often see every day? People that are half naked, that are suffering cold, and we just drop by. Could we perhaps share a little bit of our clothing that is hanging there at the closet that we don't use anymore because it's old, it's outmoded? It's not in fashion anymore. Could we use that to earn heaven by stopping ourselves and looking at those homeless people and caring for them and be compassionate about them and share our clothes? A stranger that I welcome you. How easy it is to close our mind and our hearts against all those immigrants all those people that come to steal our jobs. How easy it is to hate them, to become xenophobic. And how hard it is and how daring it is to see in them the suffering Christ too. The ones that needed to leave their own families, risk life and health in order for them to achieve at least a way of living because there was no way for them to live in their own country. So bad were the conditions there, and still are. Those immigrants that flee from their own countries because they are being persecuted, either by their faith, or their race, or their whatever, their sex. Do we allow them in our hearts? Do we open our hearts for them? How many people that are thirsty, that are hungry, the children, the elderly, the homeless. Do we open our heart? And by doing that, do we also allow Christ to give us a right place in heaven? Or are we going to be condemned by our own, own actions or lack of them? Dear brothers, there is no question whether that is going to happen. The Lord himself said so. And I urge you in the love of Christ to do what you ought to do and what you now know that you should do. In the meantime, may God bless you all.